All right, we're coming to you from beautiful South Texas. <laughs> a little windy out here. A little bit, but it's worth it, I think. Yeah, we're here to see something that Jason's been wanting to see for quite a while. <laughs> this is a SpaceX Starship, and this is SN11, and let's roll that intro and we'll tell you a little bit more. So this Starship is something that SpaceX has been working on and I'm super excited because I want to see something go into space <laughs> and we're here and unfortunately we got here just like two or three days after SN10 launched mm -hmm. and then landed and then blew up. And uh, where we're staying, which we'll go there uh, shortly, Isla yes. Blanca, is the best place to actually see the launches and so we were really bummed but luckily they've expedited SN11 and hopefully it will take off the next couple of days while we're still here. Yeah we might get lucky. So they do let you come down here and drive around the facility so you can get a closer look but then obviously if they were doing a test or a launch this entire area is closed down. So we're gonna spend the afternoon driving around here. We're actually with Jared and Rebecca. You might remember them from our videos last summer where we caravaned. Uh, they were one of the couples we caravaned with for quite a while. It's a little windy here, sorry guys. I know the camera's really shaky. And yeah, so Jared's really into this stuff too. So they've been geeking out together, but it is really cool to see. And Jason screams something in the car and I feel it might be the theme of today. And that is, you don't history. even remember what you no. yelled? You said, history being made. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, history is being made. <laughs> and so I'm excited to be a part of it. And hopefully this one takes off and lands as well. And quite frankly, I think I'll be happy if it explodes or not, <laughs> because if it doesn't, then history is made. And if it explodes, that'll be really cool. Yes. All right, let's go see if we can get an even closer look. <laughs> So we've moved around to the other side and as you can see, you can get really, really close to the facility here. Uh, and from this side, you actually get to see this guy over here, which is the Starhopper, which was their first test rocket here. And they flew it from the launch pad over there where the Starship currently is and landed it right over here where the landing pad is, where this huge crane is uh, over here fixing the explosion issues that happened with SN10. I had to get the landing pad ready for SN11. And so if you don't know, uh, this Starship is actually what they're building to take people to Mars. And so that's what's so exciting and why history is being made. Uh, and as you can see, this whole area is under construction. They just applied for, and I believe got approved for adding two suborbital launch pads. So that means that uh, the spaceships are not going to completely rotate around the Earth. It'll just like go up and come back down. And two orbital launch pads and landing pads. So they're hard at work. Uh, one thing we do know about Tesla and SpaceX and anything Elon Musk has his hands in is that things move very, very quickly.
is not much out here except for the star base uh, but it is like a state park beach and so we recommend doing what we did in bringing your lunch and just having a <laughs> nice afternoon after your long drive out here it's only about 45 minutes away from South Padre Island, so it's actually not too bad. <laughs> it's only probably about 10 miles or 20 miles away, maybe, but you have to go all the way up and around, yeah. around the, the entire bay, so. I think when we looked it up, are you talking like as the crow flies? As the crow flies, I yeah. think that was about six miles. Yeah. <laughs> so. Not far at all. Yeah, but unfortunately there's no bridges. So yeah. you do have to make a little detour to get here. But definitely bring your lunch. It was really fun, actually. This is the first time we've ever taken the truck on the beach. So it was fun to have this little adventure, drive out onto the beach, open the tailgate, and just sit here and have lunch and look yeah. at SpaceX on one side and the ocean on the other. Yeah, it's, it's a very unique experience. It's pretty cool being able to see the Starship from three sides. It looks pretty much the same from every side, but <laughs> it's still pretty cool. It's still cool. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna start heading back and we'll show you where the starships are made on our way back. Yeah. And let's go check that out now. just relaxing at the campground which is pretty easy to do when you're right on the beach <laughs> yeah. and I promise we'll show you the campground later we just have a run off to another adventure that we're taking you on real quick which is <laughs> a boat dolphin tour yes so we made the mistake of coming well we didn't know when we did this but we booked over yeah. spring break which the campground has filled up and the beaches have filled up. So we've kind of been keeping our distance and not really going into town or doing much of that anymore because everything is just packed and we're not loving it. So this was a great opportunity for us to participate in this activity with Rebecca and Jared because it is a private boat tour. So yeah. we're pretty excited about that. Yeah, definitely. All the other tours have sold out so quickly. Like when we first got here and we started looking at things, there was openings for everything. Yeah. And then like overnight, everyone who was also a last minute planner just booked <laughs> everything up so yeah it was pretty crazy to see that so we were lucky enough to be able to still snag this private tour which personally i love private tours anyway because you really get a more one-on-one -on -one experience or one on four whatever <laughs> and the people who are giving the tours are normally a little more laid back and a little more open with telling stories and just i feel like you get a more personable side and you really get to spend time with a local so we are excited for this tour and we should be getting on the boat any minute now.
is 7.30 in the morning and it's a little bit earlier than I like to really be going in my day, uh, but I did have a little bit of coffee. So today, hopefully they are going to do a static test fire, which means they just turn the engines on and um, you know flames come out and all of that jazz to make sure that uh, an engine that they replaced on the Starship is working and then they should be launching. And so we haven't been updating you. Uh, we actually even extended our week here, uh, extended here an additional week because they haven't been able to launch and it's been, they're launching, they're not, they're launching, they're not. And that's all because of weather and engine issues. And it's just a standard thing for test flights for them to be testing things. So uh, we're hoping that this new engine that they took out and replaced uh, tests all right and they launch today. So I'm actually just gonna go move our truck because I'm a positive person uh, mm -hmm. over there so that we have a nice parking spot. Maybe we can get up a little bit higher so we can see it and it's literally, I don't know, 20 RVs away. So next time we know to book a site at the very end and we'll show you this campground later. Yeah, it's uh, not the best conditions right now. No. <laughs> Look, it's... this is on the outside of the window, but still, it's very moist outside yeah. right now. Springtime in Boca Chica is definitely a, a humid time. Yes. And I'm sure this is just the beginning. <laughs> So we got to hear a static fire. Um, unfortunately, it is very, very foggy. So uh, luckily though, is uh, we, we heard it, it was pretty cool. It wasn't as loud as I thought it would be. I think they just did a very quick static fire so they can have the engine ready to launch later. But um, we're gonna head back to the RV because they have to do a couple things, check the test results and all of that before they launch. And they haven't evacuated the town of Boca Chica yet. So for us, that's kind of like our indicator of when they tell the town to evacuate, we'll probably come back down here. But as you can see, people are already gathering. Uh, these people are unlucky enough to not have an RV close by. So <laughs> RVing here is definitely the way to see SpaceX. So we managed to get some work done this morning. Very productive. Yeah, lucky for us that they <laughs> uh, actually had some people on the launch pad so we knew they weren't launching. So we were able to continue <laughs> our meetings that we had today and have the live feed up but muted. Yes. So we can kind of watch like, is there still people on the launch pad? Yes. Or do we need to run over there? <laughs> so now we are running over there. Um, not because they're ready to launch. We still think it'll be a couple hours, but um, we're just gonna go sit down there with Rebecca and Jared and everyone else. And yeah, I figured I'd use this opportunity really quick while we're walking down there to kind of show you the campground, but then also talk about it a little bit. So this campground is called... Isla Blanca. <laughs> okay. And... It is on South Padre Island. There are about 600 sites here from what we saw. And it's very weird, the section we're in. Not all the sites are like this. Um, like, so there's a concrete pad, right? So each concrete pad around here has like two or three sites around it. So you can make it a buddy site, which is why we're in this area. We booked a concrete pad with Rebecca and Jared so our doors could open towards each other because we've never had a buddy site and we've seen them and we thought they're really cool but this one is a little less organized I guess you could say well I don't even think they're they're meant to be buddy sites so I think they're that's, not. <laughs> yeah yeah you could tell that these probably used to be some sort of cabin or 
yeah, something like it's that. It's leftover foundation that they have the hookups on. <laughs> so you actually pull up and you put your like hookup side, your sewer side on that side. So you kind of all have yeah. like a, you're in a square around a concrete pad versus you guys like having your doors open and making it like usable. Yeah. It's weird. But the rest of the park, so there's one row with all these random concrete pads, but the rest of the park are your typical RV park with, you know, the structured rows, everyone's facing the same way, not so mishmashed. And I think they're decently sized yeah. from what we can tell. Some of them are bigger than others, um, which is kind of typical. And then, so what happens here is uh, because this park is so huge and it's like right at the end of South Padre Island, you have, you're surrounded by like ocean and bay. And then on the opposite side of the bay is SpaceX, obviously. So it's a beautiful location. You can walk to the beach. Um, there's a bike path right around here, well, well, around the whole park and within the park. So you can ride your bikes around and in and then even to downtown. We took the bikes out the other day when it was a little more clear. <laughs> there are a lot of birds here, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right now we have both seagulls and uh, the birds passing through are called grackles. And yes. uh, they're they very loud. loud. Yeah, so if you don't like birds, this is not the place for you. But if you like ocean views and beach vibes, yeah. uh, this is definitely the place for you. Their yeah. monthly rate is $500. Their weekly weight rate is $185. And their nightly rate is $50. So it really just makes so much more sense to stay at least a week. Yep, and uh, it's run by the county. So that's why things are kind of all over the place. <laughs> a little uh, wonky. <laughs> a little wonky. Yeah. You get these longer uh, check-in periods and uh, it's also like kind of the beach park. So locals come and just go and use the beach. And so yeah, it's just, I don't know, I, I really like it actually. It's kind of a, a fun place to stay. Yes. Uh, especially if you get one of the better sites and not a wonky site. Yep. All right, well, that whole time we were talking, we are now at the end of our row, which is the bay side and Hopefully the clouds have cleared up enough or this fog has cleared up enough that we can actually see SN11 because we couldn't see it this morning for the test, but we're Really hoping there's a cloud break between three yeah. and five today and that's when we're hoping yeah. they're gonna launch Because usually you can see it from here and I cannot see it. So come on <laughs> Come on <break>. son <laughs> <laughs> All right, just my luck. They just scrubbed <laughs> the launch um, and we found out because the roads opened as we came out here, got all set up, got all settled in, ready to wait it out, they canceled it. So good news, uh, we probably wouldn't be able to see it that well anyway. And so it's kind of like good that we didn't just have to watch a launch where we couldn't actually see it because the fog, but bad because we're leaving tomorrow and now we have to make a decision about whether we decide to extend or stay in the area, if they're potentially gonna launch it next week, or is it gonna be the week after that, or the week after that, or the week after that. <laughs> and with these experimental test flights, you just don't really know. Um, they're not really for entertainment purposes. They're trying to put people on Mars. So I guess we'll have to see tomorrow. But since it's a beautiful day and we've already decided we were going to stop working, I think we're gonna go on a bike ride. All right, well, we decided to stay. <laughs> so we extended our stay a week. Uh, yesterday was supposed to be a launch and 
the, that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, the NASA person who's supposed to be on site wasn't able to get here quick enough, so they had to close it. <laughs> so today, and yesterday would have been great visibility, but today, Elon even tweeted saying that it's gonna happen. However, this is our view. <laughs> so it's gonna be a feel it, not see it type yes. of launch today. So. <laughs> Uh, hopefully the sun comes up in the next 30 minutes and just burns it all away, even though that's not how it works. <laughs> um, we're hoping. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> so we got to hear the launch and feel it. And feel it and a little bit. It. Yeah, we smelt it. <laughs> and it unfortunately ended in a large bang, which is generally not a good sign. And we were watching the feeds that they had, and you actually you didn't really get to see anything except for the bang, and then the cameras on SpaceX went out and it was so foggy that we couldn't track from any of the other cameras online. Uh, but they did return to the Space Inch launch pad camera and you see debris falling. So I would say that this was not a successful landing. So no. uh, I do wish that it was clear and we were able to see it, but it would still be really cool being here uh, and at least feeling it. And I'm sure it'll be even cooler when BN1 goes out there because that has like six times as many engines and so it's gonna be six times as loud and I'm excited. And that ended our attempts to see SN11 launch and land and although it wasn't the results we were looking for, we'll take it. After that we packed up and headed to our next destination. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to join the getaway gang. We'll see you next time. Bye guys! You're Dude, fine, over. grow up. <laughs> okay, so we have ventured now. Well, last time we were at SpaceX. Okay. Do you have a good time? Yeah. <laughs> a little rough. <laughs>